Well, God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you one more time. Rev Eddie here. Hey, there's my warriors. I got any more warriors out there? Hallelujah. Oh, we are so excited today. I'm telling you, the Lord has blessed us. We have a very powerful, powerful testimony in this podcast today. And you're not going to believe who we have. Amen. We have S.B. Tone, the Brarian. Amen. God bless you, Tone. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, Rev. Thank you. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the hot seat, as some people have referred to it after being interviewed. But you have such a powerful testimony to the goodness of God, the long arm of God to be able to reach you where you were. And we're going to get into that in just a second. I want to open up this interview with the Word of God. Amen. I'm going to go to Proverbs 3, y'all. Amen. And I'm starting in verse 1, and I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation for your ease. My child, never never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years, and your life will be satisfying. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will earn a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Oh, you act like I didn't say that. Let me read that again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have healing for your body and strength. For your bones. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah, Tone. Thank you for coming on. And let's just get you right in that grilling seat immediately. Amen. Amen. I want to go back. I want to go back before you needed the Lord in your life. How did you grow up? Did you grow up in a nice neighborhood, a Christian home? What was it like for you as a child? Uh, I grew up in Sacramento, California. Uh, my mom, I grew up with a single mother. She she was 17 when she had me, so babies having babies. Yeah. So uh, I stayed a lot with my grandma. I remember she, uh, my mom was going to school and she was working and, uh, I remember a lot of things. Like six years old when, is when really I start remembering uh, when I can really remember back. Okay, what happened at six years old? Uh, man, a lot of things. Uh, were you going to church? No, nah, church wasn't. Uh, church wasn't around. Oh, uh, we weren't. We weren't going to church. My grandmother believed in uh but you know she struggled too. She she struggled with uh with meth. Meth, you know? okay, okay. Yeah, boy, that's a real danger in society today, isn't it? Yeah. Oh so, boy. Uh, so the kind of I remember being in Del Paso Heights projects. That's that's where my childhood I can remember started. So and you grew up in the project. Yeah, projects. Yeah. Project kid here in Sacramento. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So I remember I used to walk home from school uh, by myself, and you know my mom be at work or school, and come home lock the door, don't go outside, don't answer for nobody. 
Okay, that was the house rule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, so I listened to the house rule, but I had a lot of freedom and time by myself. Yeah. Which, which is dangerous for a child. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. Now, is your grandma in the house, or you're there by yourself? Oh, my grandma's in Placerville. I'm in Sac, so I'm by myself. Oh, six years old. How old are you yeah. now? About six years old. You're walking home from school by yourself. How long a walk was that? Uh, probably about mm, maybe a half mile. mile. Oh, okay. Was it a dangerous walk? It's a dangerous neighborhood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so here's this six-year-old child. <laughs> Walking home from school every day with the instruction, get in that house, lock that door, don't you open it for nobody. Yeah, and uh, okay, you know, a lot of a lot of things happened. You know, I was a, uh, I was I was touched by uh, fast forward a little bit. I was I was touched by one of my dad's girlfriends, and uh. I learned that's a two way, that's a double edged sword in the wrong way. Like, cause it's either gonna, it's gonna have you resenting sexual desires or it's gonna, it's gonna put you in a full on, that's what my life consists of. And that's, wait I a like minute, the wait a minute. We got to slam on the brakes now. How old are you when this woman six, touched a child? Six years old. You were six years old and being molested. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, up in there, shoot. You Did know, you I, tell I was, your stepdad? No, it was my real dad's. Oh. Uh, your real dad's, dad's girlfriend. girlfriend. Yeah. So no, nah, I never. Uh, I I opened up to my mom about that about when I was thirty, so about three years ago. Oh, okay. Okay. And, yeah, so it's a. Did she you know, scare you? Did she tell you not to tell anyone, and you kept that secret all those years? Nah, nah, nah. I just, I just remember that good feeling. Uh huh. And then, shoot, then as a child, not understanding, it's like I start, you know, committing acts mm. with with kids my age. So, no. wait a minute. Hold up, homie. Slam on the brakes. So, now you're sexually active in yeah. single digits, six, seven, and eight years old? And the cold part is, Rev, like, you know, when you're a kid, you want to grow up and be something, right? Yeah. For me, I just wanted to grow up because I knew once I get of age, mm -hmm. I can keep, I, shoot, it won't be a problem then. Whoa. What do you mean it ain't going to be a problem? I hurry well, up and grow up. I can defend myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in my carnal state of mind, as a child, it's like, shoot, I want to grow up and have sex. That's the only reason oh. I want to grow up. I'm not I'm not thinking about nothing else. Like, that was, you know, I'm not thinking about being a police officer or a doctor or a lawyer. Like, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about... I'm chasing I'm chasing that that high, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. All right. You can get back on the gas. Take us take us where we need to be. I just had to back up for a second. Get yeah. the help the audience get a clear picture of what's yeah. happening to this six year old tone. Amen. Yeah, so move forward, uh you know, my mom, she uh she was a young parent and she did the best she could. Right. You know, as being a young parent. And there was a lot of there was a lot of things that had happened that I just held on to and it built bitterness and resentment to the point where I remember as a kid when someone asked me, Do you love your mom? I know the right answer, so I lie and tell them yes, so they didn't think that was wrong with me. Oh. But I I never felt and the reason why I felt that way, because I felt like my mom didn't love me and she didn't care about me. So I'm walking around with this orphan spirit and, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, this, this this spirit of neglect. 
Well, uh, what what led to that? The time alone, your mom not being there. She worked long hours, two jobs. What? I just don't rem. I don't remember a lot. Like I remember my 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 oldest little sister's dad, and that was my mom's boyfriend at the time. And you know, she spent a lot of time with him, but he so dope. Oh, and he. He used he used the horse ranch in Manteca as a cover up. So he'd have me. I remember seven years old, out on horse trails, taking people on tours. Like uh, if you want riding lessons, yeah, I, he'll he'll have me take you on the trail. Really, so, seven years old and you're riding horses, like a cowboy. Um, yeah. Uh huh. So, and then we we stayed in the projects, but we had a Porsche who were peanut butter seats in the projects. And uh -oh. I remember watching, I remember watching them pull in manila folders yeah. out the, the attic. I know what time it is now, but as a child, like I didn't, I didn't know none of that. Yeah. So she was, she was gone a lot. And I'm assuming she was with him or at work or. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't remember staying ever staying overnight by myself, but I would stay at you know her home girl sometimes, or be with my grandma's, or she would be at the house. Wow! Like my, I, sometimes I sleep with my mom, and like she kept she kept the banger like on the bed. <laughs> A know? gun? Yeah. In the bed with you guys? It was just me. My my youngest sisters were nine years apart, so she okay. didn't come in the picture till I was nine. Oh, so you're sleeping in bed with gun as a child? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like a little wow. silver twenty, a little silver thirty eight. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And were you given instructions like if somebody busts through this house, you can you can defend yourself? That's the thing, Rev. No one ever gave me up about anything. Like, I just knew not to touch it. Yeah, yeah. And, and my mom, she never let me play with guns, like nerve guns and squirt guns. Like, it was a trigger for her. And <laughs> yeah. She wouldn't even let me. She wouldn't even let me watch wrestling because it was safe. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. So it's <laughs> like. Mm, mm, mm. You know. That that's kind of. You know, my mama wasn't always saved. Like, the woman she is now yeah. is not the woman I grew up with. And it took me a long time to understand that. Like, yeah. why you treat, like, when my little sister comes, I remember crying for McDonald's and I get the business. Then my sister's born, she cried for it, and we go. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I used to get whooped for is like, yeah. she gets passes. And then I'd be like, how come you don't whoop her? You did that to me. Right. Like, and I, I'm still, like, probably you know, young teens at this point, it's like, and she, I remember her telling me, it's young parenting. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sorry for that stuff, but that didn't do anything for me. Yeah. <laughs> in my mind. Right, so right. I held, I, held, I held on to a lot of uh, resentment and unforgiveness for my mother for doing the best that's with what, what she had. And I didn't ever understand that to, right. to about, about 30. Wow. So what did this lead to, this type of neglect as a child? Mostly so spending me, time alone, having been sexually uh, abused, and now you got that spirit of lust, and you can't wait to grow up. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. yeah. Where does this so, go? So it takes you... Uh, you want to be accepted and and what the world you know what they call being a, a real one yeah so yeah. you start the things that the they still talk about the same things in the music you know money cars clothes hoes murder you know all these things right right and this is what makes you real and that's so, project life isn't it yeah uh, wrong l <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, so I started getting into that stuff, and like for me, like music, music was my god. Because mm. what it said, what it said, the things it was saying. Yeah, I do. I do background checks on cats, and if they're not about what they're talking about, yeah, I wouldn't listen to them. Oh, you know, 
I, I was on that type of deal, and then I wasn't I wasn't too crazy. Like, I played football. I was good at football. What position and, did you play? Uh, running back and fullback. Oh, you look like a good running back. Yeah, you used to mow them over, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Hurt yeah. somebody. Yeah. That was wow. my whole reason for playing because it was like I get to – and I used to hit – like, Rev, you know how uh, you go crown to crown? Yeah. How that's illegal? Yeah. Well, my time, it wasn't illegal. And I, I knew that, like, pretty much if I kill somebody on the field, I – I won't get charged. So I used to try to break people's necks and go head to head like that. Wow. And back yeah. in the day, lowest man win. You see yeah, what I'm, I'm saying? Sh I'm, sh I'm, sh I'm short and stocky and I had a cowboy collar, so I didn't break my neck. Right. Right. But, but that's just. So you were punishing them as a fullback coming through that line. <laughs> yeah, I was trying. Yeah. You know, and then, just angry, you know, and I, then it, you know, the girls, the girls, then the smoking the weed, start smoking weed at like 13. 13 she, years old and you're getting high now. Wow. So this is yeah. in high school? Junior high? Uh, junior high. Yeah. Like eighth grade. So you playing football still after you were getting yeah. high? Yeah, I used to. It used to, like, I used to feel it made me play better. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> like because when I would smoke, I would it'd be an upper for me. Yeah. Like every my my homies would smoke and be like, "Bro, you're blowing our high." Yeah. Because I, I, I'd be wanting to go play football, play basketball, do this, do that. Right. You know. So yeah, I was I was smoking then too. Yeah. First time you hit that weed, did you have any feelings inside? I remember first time I got high, it was like I heard a voice that said, you have crossed the line that you don't want to cross. Mm, nah, because my cousin, my cousin turned me on to the tree. He smoked, and I finally smoked with him. And when I smoked, like I didn't feel anything, and okay. he was so he was so paranoid about me tripping. I yeah. wanted to mess with him, so I went out into the middle of the street and I laid there. I'm like, cousin, uh -huh. I can't move. I can't move. Help me up. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And he started tripping. Like, bro, get up. Stop playing. And I started laughing and got up. But it was weird. Like three days later, we were at a basketball game. My eyes were bloodshot. Wow. And you feeling was, it now, huh? Yeah, and people were like, you high? I was like, shoot, I smoked three days ago. Well, you still high? I was like, shoot, I guess what? so. I was like, yeah, your, your eyes are hecka red. Yeah. Like, but I don't I don't remember feeling anything. You didn't feel like you'd crossed the line you shouldn't have or that maybe you shouldn't be getting involved with drugs. You wanted to fit in and be cool. Yeah. Be yeah. accepted. Yeah. Trying to grow up too fast, sounds like to me. Yeah, hey, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I, I, I was stripped from my childhood. Right. And God uses, he uses that. Now I can use that with my kids to know what that looks like. Yeah, yeah. To where I, I don't be the parent to fall in that pit. And mm -hmm. to where they're going to have to suffer for it. Right. I know what it's like. Yeah. You know, so it's like I'm thankful that God, like, now I'm at the point in my life, in my walk, to where I'm thankful for everything I went through because I got different, God's giving me different discernment to right. where I can see different things now because I've, I've been in the dark so long. <laughs> right. I know, you know, and then as I build a stronger relationship, our relationship gets stronger, he starts revealing things and starts showing me why certain things happen and it's all to bring him glory right so now you're 13 you're getting high did I hear that right you're running with girls now yep cause you had a plan from 6 years old what you was gonna do with girls yeah <laughs> okay yeah 
did that manifest as well? Uh, yeah. Too. Okay. Um, like my my first time wasn't meaningful. Like the girl that I, I you know, I did the thing with. She was known for that. Like everybody known for hitting her. Yeah. So it's like in my like so now it's like shoot, I lost my virginity pretty much to a prostitute. Right, right. You know, and uh it just it, it it didn't do nothing but get better. I was so deceived, Rev. I felt like once I had sex with a woman that me and her have a like now we have an even better relationship. Like I could talk like I it was weird. I was so deceived in this. Uh huh. You know, and and so it just it, it kept going and kept going and it didn't stop till uh my first marriage, but that's later. Yeah, yeah. No, let's stay as a kid. So you're thinking yeah. in your mind because you had sex with them that what? You're able to communicate better with them? Yeah. Like like our friendship is like we can just be friends. But now I'm like like I don't know. I used to get I didn't I used to get comfortable with being the side because I don't have to deal with the heartbreak. I'm the heartbreaker. Oh. So it wasn't meaningful relationships you were looking for or intimate relationships that could grow. Nah, because I You're just to running tell, through. Yeah, because I used to tell it, it's sad because I used to tell women when they talk about love, like yeah. you love me, I, I would tell them. Love don't exist. What is that? That's, that's just a four letter word. Oh and wow! I believe I felt that. I I don't. God had to show me what love is because my mother was dealing with the thing she was to where it paralyzed her for being able to love me the way that she was. That I felt she should have. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You couldn't feel love. Did you know? Had you ever felt love? How old are we now? We're 13? Yeah. So had you ever felt love or loved or love anything or anyone? No, nah, I was I was selfish. Okay. Like, I, I I didn't I didn't have love for myself, so I couldn't love nobody. Right. Right. And you hadn't met the Lord yet. So you don't know nah. what true love is. Okay, let's keep going. So where did this lifestyle lead to? Well, we'll speed up. Uh, went through high school. Uh, I got a scholarship to go to Sac City. But I chose to start selling weed. Wait a minute. Back up. Slam them brakes on, homie. <laughs> okay, you trying to speed through the intersection. No, come on back. So <laughs> you got a scholarship now. We t are, we are you saying that you were good in school, getting those grades? You applied yourself? No, I just knew how to cheat, and I knew how to manipulate. <laughs> oh, no. Wife. And ended up getting a scholarship. Yeah. A full-ride scholarship to college? I don't remember what kind of scholarship it was because I wasn't trying to go to school. I knew it. I knew that I got a scholarship to play football, but I wanted to make money and I didn't want to go to school. And I graduated like I was 18 because I started the way my birthday hit was in the beginning of January. So I started school late. Yeah, I did so too. I, yeah. So, so I, I got to the point where I could sign myself out. Oh, wow. And I, I, yeah, and then we used to get drunk. Like, they had Wednesdays, late start Wednesdays, and we used to go do bottle runs, to go steal alcohol, and to go to the homie's house, somebody's house, and uh -huh. get faded. And then by the, uh, 10 o'clock, that's when we had to be at school. Now, wait a minute. Well, how old were you when you started drinking? Shoot, probably, I never thought about that. Probably like ninth, fifth grade. Oh, my goodness. So now you're smoking weed, you're drinking, you're cheating in school, but obviously in a way where it kept your grade point average up. So you got a a football scholarship to go to college, but you weren't going to go. 
to college? Yeah, so I stopped going. You stopped going. Yeah. After receiving this scholarship, some people would be very proud of that scholarship and really put their efforts forward, you know, and go after that thing. You know what I mean? Because they ain't handing out scholarships like candy. They're hard to come by. Sure. But when when you when you have that's why it tells us, you know, the love of money is the root to all you know blind you from what God has for you. Okay, so you're and thinking money. You want cash money. That's what they say is cool. Like, shoot, I can't have no money and I can't get I can't be fresh and fly and like I can't be real. Like I can't buy a gun if I ain't got no money and we're supposed to be gangsters. That's what's cool. Okay. So you know, now so you're gonna go full in. You're still in the project. Nah, we moved because we moved. Uh, we moved to Elk Grove, and then we moved to uh, Lincoln Village. Okay. When I was in middle, when I was in middle school, and that's when I started, you know, smoking and drinking. Gotcha. And those are good areas, aren't they? I'm not familiar with the area. Uh. El Grove is cool. Lincoln Village is a, a known Piru neighborhood, the Blood neighborhood. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, it's chilled out a lot. Okay. You know, but I there's a lot of people from my neighborhood that died from gun violence. Yes, yeah. And you how know, so. old were you when you started packing? When you started carrying? Uh, that came later. Oh, came, okay. I really, I, I'm, I'm like a late bloomer. It, and I really didn't turn up until I went to Texas when I was when I was 18, 19. So instead of going to college and playing football and taking advantage of this scholarship, you went to Texas. Yeah, because the Russian homie hit it, hit me and my partner Junior up and shoot, he had a lick for us. So okay. We go, we go uh, to his big homie's house and these are Russians, so. We walk in there and they, they tell us the mission. We got to go yank some people out of the car. We got to go get the car back. And yeah. we caught them at, at, a, at an intersection. And, you know, you know, then, shoot, we got the car back, right? Oh, yeah. And and so we get back and the dude is like, shoot, I see you put in work. Uh, or he, he, he has a, a pistol in his hand and holds it in front of me. Like, this reminded me of a movie. Yeah, I'm tripping. Yeah, because he's like, he's like, shoot, you ready to put in some real work now? And I'm like, I remember I told him, I'm like, I'm only, I, I don't, I don't play with the murder game for money, like, you know, other type of principles, mm -hmm. like, you know, but for for money, like, that's not my get down. And I didn't think I was gonna walk out of there. And he said, I respect you and open the garage, and you know. And my neighborhood was hot, so my uh, I started seeing noticing po like the area the where my mom's house is like police. She stays on the good side of Lincoln Village. Okay. So police really don't go over there like that. Okay. And I start noticing cops driving down my street. Oh. And, and then I remember one day I called my dad. I'm crying. I'm like, Dad, I need to come out there. Like. I'm going to either end up dead or in prison out here and for a long time. The stuff I'm starting to get into, so. That's what here. got you into Texas. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I wanted to stay the whole summer, you know, that way I can I can finish out with a bang, but God shortened my time because that's what we agreed to. And then he got a ticket earlier, and then, like, they had threw me a party, a going away party and everything. I never made it there. <laughs> what messing, what yeah. happened? Shoot, messing with the chick I was with. You okay, know, like the homies, everybody threw a house party. Yeah, for yeah. Me. Uh huh. And you know, but I never made it. But I believe God, and I didn't make it because my plane ticket. But I believe God didn't allow me to go through the whole summer because what I was feeling was would have came to pass. Oh. And what were you so, feeling? That I was going to either end up dead or in prison for life. Oh, okay. So, so, 
we speed up, we go out. I, I'm out there now, and I give me a job. And where is this? Shoot, Texas like, or back here? Yeah, no, nah, I moved to Texas now. Okay. <laughs> and uh, shoot, I'm doing good. I get a job, and you feel me? I I'm yeah. riding a bike to work. I'm riding my bike to work until I buy me a car. Yeah. And it's crazy. As soon as I buy a car, it seems like about that time, one of my cousins called me. Was like shoot hey bro he started giving me the rundown it was like um shoot ready, pretty much ready to make some money so i start getting i start uh you feel me yeah shoot. i'm with started you sending it he started sending it this way and mm -hmm. i'm still i'm still working at the time and i ended up getting fired because i had a bad like i had a problem with authority okay attitude you know? issues yeah. 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 I had a, a a chip on my shoulder. Okay. And so then I just shoot. I just started. I started selling weed, and I started selling whatever I could get my hands on. Right. Whether it's it, it's drugs, women, shoot, whatever. Okay. So we're back to that cash money. Yeah. Uh huh. We're back there, and then that's where. Uh, that's where my walk really, like, that's where I started doing things that, okay, now I really got to live up to this. I'm, 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 I'm not from this state. Right. Nobody knows who I am. I got to make a name. Mm-hmm. And I can't be playing with folks because I'm an out of stater, so I know they're not gonna be, they're not gonna be playing with me. Right. So, I, shoot, it just gradually shoot. Start selling weed. I met a partner that shoot. He, the way he moved was just I didn't like how he moved, but he had all the clientele. Okay. And when he sold. He had one product. I had another. And we came together. So, you know, I kind of we I was using him for his clients. Right. You know, and then we ended up being cool, and that's a whole another story. But <laughs> one time <laughs> we were uh, one time we were shooting dice. He used to shoot dice. Okay. And uh, shoot, we're shooting dice, and I'm always, I always had trust thing. So like, I, I would never set up shop in a trap. Like I'd bring it to you, and if you call me telling me what you want, like I, shoot, I, I charge you up after I change my number because I would believe it. Like phone tapping. All right. You know what I'm saying? So the rule is not to get caught. That's and, right. You know so. But he 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 met some some dudes and uh you know he told them all his business what he do they end up pulling up and I didn't know he met nobody yeah so we're shooting dice and there's me him and another dude and I see a dude that it, we're in the little back house and the dude comes up and has like one arm he got his head in the door and just one arm out you can't uh -huh. see his other arm right so. He was like, shoot, uh, you got some pounds? Mm -hmm. And I, I just stood up, and I'm looking at him, and I'm about like six, seven feet away from him. Yeah. And he, and then, shoot, he came in and drew down. Uh -uh. And then, yeah, and then he's like, he's telling us to lay down. Well, they're robbing my homie. They're, they're really robbing us. Yeah. They're focused on him. So they're telling him to lay down, and or they're telling all of us to lay down. Right. But... I'm looking at him like, okay, I'm waiting to see what he's going to do. Right. So eventually he ended up sitting down. So I sat down. They ran through my pockets. To, they kicked the other dude. But I'm thinking after the fact, like, bro, you you the setup man. You right. The only one that got, you the only one that got kicked. That looks like a show. Yeah. Okay. So after that, like once the first time I got robbed, it's like shoot, it, it did something because I'm like, I remember I didn't feel anything, I didn't I didn't feel fear, I didn't feel, I just felt numb. Yeah, yeah. And then and then once they ran off, we we ran outside to try to see the car, and it's just like man, if we was ready, bro, we could have got the knocking at them, and they wouldn't even hit the corner. Right, right. But then what? For what though? Right. <laughs> you know, just to go do life or something, you know. But so then after that, I started 
shoot, I started carrying. And then I always kept one in the head. Like, I'd load up. Yeah. And then I, I'd rack it back and then pull, pull the mag out and put put another bullet in there. Right. One in the chamber. Yeah, so all I got to do is pull the trigger. Right. And so as I'm in this lifestyle, then she... Now you're me. armed and extremely dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With <laughs> attitude. I mean, <laughs> okay. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, I was I was tripping. Yeah. So so then I ended up meeting like the girl across the street. I hadn't seen her. I'd been there a couple months, but then this girl pops up and I started she I started talking to her and uh she's probably like, I don't know, like four or five years older than me. Okay. So, so I'm talking to her and then she find out she's out of rehab. She used to be a stripper. She's out of rehab. And all I hear when she told me she was used to be a stripper, I'm like, I'm about to get you back on that pole. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And that's what ended up happening. Oh, so, so she's trying to get out of the life and you yeah. trying to get her back in the life. I got her back in the life. And back on well, drugs, too? Well, that comes with it, because that come to find out, like, that lifestyle was her trigger for doing dope. Right. So, right. she ev eventually, she did end up starting doing dope, and then eventually, that's when she started turning trips. At first, it was just stripping. Right, right. And if you're turning tricks, I'm not tripping. Just she, every time, every time she would get some money, she would come give it to me, but it would... It got to the point where I'm like, man, stop doing that in front of people. Uh huh. Uh huh. Because another man seeing you give me money is gonna stop giving it to you. Right. Right. So I was just in that. I was just I was stuck in that, and I was in that for about so from probably like 19 to about 24, 25. Ooh. I was, and then I started fighting a lot. And then she found out I'm good at fighting. Uh oh. And and every fight like I've ever been in, you know, God protected me because I never got touched. So and you whooping know. down people, and you don't even have a bloody nose or a bloody lip. Nah, my hand might just be broke, maybe, or my foot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, but you know, that's how prideful I was. Yeah. Wow. And so, so you're like a walking have, menace now. <laughs> full on. Like that movie, Menace to Society. Okay. Yeah. Yep, and then like I, I kept catching I kept catching weed cases. Weed then cases. Out, okay. Yeah, and in Texas in Texas that's like you might you're better off getting caught with crack at the time. Really? They had a zero tolerance for weed out there. Mm. So I always end up getting probation. And when I went to jail, I always have my money gone down for a little thing. But I've been on probation three times for weed. And then uh, the last one I got was for coke. For coke? And, okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so I've been on probation for like eight years. <laughs> like, Unofficially, yeah, like not the whole thing, like just different sections, right? Each, each one would be a year to two years, mm hmm. And so, that's that's the lifestyle I was living with. Gotcha. Okay, then what happens? This is a good movie tone. Come on, keep this camera rolling. <laughs> All right, so, uh Yeah, shoot, a lot of lot of situations where I should I should not be here, Rev. Like I, the things they never caught, like would sent me have me doing a life sentence, and right. there's been a couple of them. So it's like I could have got killed a few times. I, I I should be doing like double life sentences for the things that God allowed them to miss. That I think I'm smart enough. I just thought I was that smart. I yeah. used to think, well, the, the, the police are getting smarter every day, so the criminal has to get smarter every day. Right. I think like this. Right, right. You know, and then 
it's like I would I never join a gang because I had authority problems like I would I would think if the lick is bad and you try to send me on a mission I tell you no like you're not gonna DP me right right mm-hmm. so I never I never got put on but I'm a I'm, I, I was affiliated with whoever and I had such a complex to where I some days when I just feel like it when we're going out I know we're going out that night yeah which we went out like every night we going out because that's where that's where we make money at too right right but I, I would I would intentionally dress up and I dress in all red to see if a loaf was tripping right or I dress up in all blue to see if a damu has something to say right right like if you're if, if you're banging something I'm gonna push up on you and, and be in your face I'm not gonna push no lines but I'm gonna be in your face right and I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna be using that language yeah like whatever whatever color I'm wearing I'm I'll use that language when I'm talking to somebody uh-huh. that I feel because my thing was pulling cards like if you're not whatever you say you represent yeah then I want to see yeah and if you really represent I, <laughs> yeah yeah see if your heart is really in it <laughs> yeah because it, it's like every time I would get into something people would get the banging yeah. Oh well, I'm this, that, and other, or I'm a marine, uh, woofy woo, or I'm this. And for me, it's like you're scared because you're yeah. trying to use intim- you're trying to use intimidation factors. Right. Right. And and, yeah. and to me, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, okay, shoot, I'm about to bust you off because you're scared and trying to act hard. Uh huh. Yep. I'm so, gonna pull your whole card. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's. <laughs> That's 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 the life I was I was walking. That's then, dangerous. Yeah, and then uh, I end up about twenty five. I end up getting married. Uh, I was a predator. Like what I mean by that is like, shoot, you know, I'm looking for for my sexual fixes. So uh, married women would be a target uh-huh. because if there's problems in the home, nine times out of ten, Christ ain't in there. Yeah, I couldn't get. I wouldn't be able to get one if one had Christ, right? And and single mothers because they want a man, right? And mar- married women because they they have a, they they want to have a man to talk to, a friend to talk to because they can't talk to their husband, right? And so that word showed me the penalty of these things. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. My goodness! My goodness! So it yeah, is I, just snowballing worse and worse and worse. You're getting yeah. deeper and deeper and deeper in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Come on. Yeah. Keep, keep yeah. spilling it. <laughs> Did you believe in God at this point in your life, or you weren't even thinking about it? I believe in God the way the world believes in God. Yeah, I believe in God, but my I have no fruit in my life. Yeah, okay. That's how that's how I believe. But one time, and and I can't just say it like that because that was God. God has always been working. Yeah. I just never recognized Him as Lord or even realized this is Him working. Like right. times they didn't find those things. I look back now and, and and God shows me He's been there the whole time. And you and know so many he things was. He so many things He protected me from. Wow. You wow. Know, it, and then it's like the things that and God loves me because he said the things that the enemy intended for evil yeah I will use for good to those who love me right and it's just like I didn't even love you right like I and you still love me isn't that something and, man and the, the God we serve you know and it's I don't he's been he's been my, my testimonies my whole life like i don't have this aha moment like i got some of them to where like new revelations came like being in god yeah still struggling in areas right but and now I, at this point in the story you're that gangster okay mm-hmm. yeah you're that gangster and and you're just doing your will your way what happens? I mean, where does it go now? You're 25 years old. Do they, uh, did you ever do prison time? Uh, by God's grace, no. Wow. And my thing, my thing is, I feel 
God, he, he, he definitely preserved me for that and saved me from that because my mind, if I go to prison, I'm yeah. never getting out. I'm about to conform with that because I got, I got to do, I got to be here with these men and I know they're going to put, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to test me. Right. And I know I'm not like, I would have to, in my mind, it's like, shoot, the first one that tests me, that would be the last person he ever tests. Right. Right. So Which did you do it, jail? Did you go to yeah, jail? I've been to jail a bunch of times. The and, longest I've been, the yeah. longest I've been in jail though, is about a week. A week, one county. Then I had they sent me over to another county to do the do another week over there because that's the deal I had made with. I had to have two lawyers because I I got caught up in. Uh, in Rockwall County, and then I violated in Tarrant County. So, and that's in Texas. A, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so what was the turning point for you? When did you so, toss up your hands? What mess had you got yourself in? <laughs> what happened? Well, I had got married. I got married to a woman. She had four kids. Um, my motive for getting married was was from Satan, <laughs> because as I'm 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 one foot in, one foot out. I'm in the word, but I'm still fornicating, doing drugs, like. Uh huh. And then God, like, I I remember reading about fornication and how God seen it. Right, and it it, it it convicted me, but I didn't listen. So, but wait a minute, shoot. slam on the brakes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Bust a U turn. We got to go back. Okay. But Double you back. was Mister Gangster, so Mister Gangster meets a girl and decides yeah. to get married. And what are you doing in the word? Did she? Was she a believer? Was she in the word? How how you getting the word? Okay, let's keep driving back. Come on, because it, it God has brought me to remember it. Because okay, why I stop selling? Why I stop? Why I stop hustling? Yeah. Okay, so when because there was this old man, he used to come faithfully every Wednesday. I'd front him, and he'd come back every Wednesday. He'd pay me. I'd front him. That's our, that was our system. Okay, well, I need. I had just, uh, I needed a pack sent and I didn't have no address. So I'm like, shoot, I'll throw you some, I'll throw you a couple of if you, uh, you know, I'll send this to your house. Right. Well, his son is a known thief and I didn't even know he stayed there. Ooh. Well, the package got sent. We see it got it delivered, but it's not there. Yeah. So we go to the house, the son's in there, and, like, me and my partner, like, we, we go in there, we draw down. Yeah. And we start running through the house, and, like, where's it at? And then we talked to the mailman, too. It, oh. Uh, he, he had a yellow, he was telling us the person who received the package had a yellow shirt on. Uh-huh. So we're in this room, and, like, you know, shoot, we threatening it. Like, and did so, he have a yellow shirt on? No, the thing is, Rev, like, I looked, and I thank God that I didn't put two and two together right then and there. Because I remember looking, I see a yellow shirt. Yeah. And then, it, it like, like, just thrown off to the side. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, look, bro, like, if it's not, if it's not here by tomorrow, it's bad. Right. So, it wasn't there. Now I'm hunting for bro, and I can't find him. I'm hunting for, like, a week straight. And yeah. I'm talking to my folks, like, they're like, hey, you need to get it back. Yeah. Oh, because this is why, Rev, because a, a, a week, a couple weeks before that, the feds took five took five pounds that had got sent. Whoa. And so I had them up in my business, and uh, they couldn't do nothing because nobody's name was up on the thing. Right. So now, so, feds are looking and eyeballing. Yeah. Putting so, two and two together. Right. And 
the thing is, my ID didn't have where I stayed at. And then I was living in North Richmond Hills. And then right at, when I got home, I got home and then I'm chilling. And I, and I, you know, I look out the window and there's a, there's a police car sitting facing my apartment. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I'm like, you know, and I had just told my folks, I'm tripping on calling my folks because he's like, I, I'm, I don't want him to think that I'm saying I got it and that I didn't get it. Yeah. That I'm trying to get over. So that's where I'm like, I'm tripping calling him, but I got to call him. So he's like, Tone, I know how you get down, bro. Like, that's just it, you know? Yeah. It happens. So, and then now, see, back to the old man. That's why I had to go that way. And mm, mm, mm. so when the pack got, when dude took the pack and my folks are like, Hey, so if you don't, either the old man got to pay up or we're coming down there and we're finna cheese grade his whole house. Yeah. The yeah. thing about this old man, I had compassion for it was he was an old man. He had his own business. He had a little bread truck. He had okay. a truck with, with a little trailer. He delivered bread, like honest living. Yeah. He just smoked tree. Yeah. And I had to tell him, I'm like, look, bro, if you don't come up with this money, I even told my folks, I'm like, can just knock, knock bro off. Yeah. Handle him. Like, I'm not tripping. Not the old man. He got other kids that live there. He's like, I don't care who's in the house. Everybody's going to get it, bro. If you, if you don't, we just took a loss. Like, we can't take another one. That's six gone. Right. And so I had to tell him, like, what was coming to pass. Right. So this old man had, had to sell his bread truck. He had to sell it the way he makes his money to pay me so I could pay my folks. Oh, wow. And that I after that, I stopped because I'm like, I'm putting good people in bad situations. Like, I didn't, I wasn't tripping off the sun. Yeah. Because you, you did that. Like, pops ain't even like that. But what you did is going to have your father get right get the business. So it's, that's what made me quit hustling. Yeah, it's starting to get out of control now. People yeah, are about to get seriously hurt. Uh-huh. Yeah, so a little time passes, and then, you know, I, I, I see this lady at the laundromat, and uh, she, has a, she has a youngin'. Start yeah. talking to her and uh, and like I say, God was already. I was in. My, I'd read my word and I'd be listening to it. Like, I'm why like, I like would audio. you be reading your word? What happened? So you're out of the game. You're no longer Mister Gan Gangster. Did you go and get a real job? Uh, yeah. Okay. So you're out of the game. You got a real job. How did that word get in your hand? What happened? Man, that, Who did you meet? I don't know, man. I remember one time, like, and this is probably when I'm in my early 20s, like mm -hmm. 22, maybe, 23, 24, I don't know. But I remember reading, I went to a hotel, there was a Bible on there, and I opened it up, and it said, uh -huh. and this is, this, is, this is when I was telling women that, like, I don't, I, yeah, I believe in God, but what is love? Like, it's just a four letter word so uh -huh. this at this time the scripture came it says if you don't have any love in your heart God is not in you that's right because God that, is like, love and that changed like that stirred up something it, 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 it caused me to quit thinking saying that you know wow. quit thinking like that uh huh uh huh but I'm still in like I'm still doing drugs I'm still in the strip clubs making money I'm still messing with women like I was doing all that until uh, I met my first wife okay and what how, how why I chose to marry her yeah was because I was messing with this chick and I had caught something Ooh. and I'm just I, I'm I'm at work I'm scratching like yeah yeah I look I, I looked at my stuff, Rev, it looked like it had went through a cheese grater, and it's like, man, I think I got something I can't get rid of. Yeah, yeah. So my ex-wife, I was, you know, I was messing with her, too, and I'm, I went to her, and I'm like, look, uh, I got something going on, because my whole motive was, this is, this is what my thought process was, either spread it 
because the person who gave it to me didn't care. Uh-huh. Or get a wife or get a wife that's gonna accept what accept what you have. Because all I'm worried about is able to am I able to have sex or not? Right. So that was the foundation of why I got married. So when I showed her what was going on, and like I'm still I never even went to the doctor yet. Wow. She, I showed her and she's like she wasn't tripping. She didn't budge. She didn't flinch. She was like, shoot. And I told her, I'm like, I don't know if I can, if this, I don't know if I got something I can't get rid of or what, but, uh huh. And, and then shoot. She's like, well, whatever you got, I'll have it with you. Uh-uh. And, then, and then, you know, did our thing. And for me, my, I'm like, this is how the devil twisted scripture on me. Yeah. This love is, un- this love is unconditional. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She don't care about your condition. But not realizing that she's so broken and desperate for a man, she's willing to do anything. Wow. You know, so when my marriage didn't work, I understood why. Yeah. At the end. Yeah. And I was going to church. Like the pastor was, we would go to counseling. Uh huh. And like the pastor, was like, me and him was cool. Like he liked me. He's a, uh, Pastor Paul. He, <laughs> old white guy with glassy he looked like uh, peter griffin yeah yeah he was he was just cool though and like like even the church paid for our christmas and stuff and Uh uh-huh we would go to counseling and he would always be like i'd always tell her like tell him like she's this she's that he'd always hit me Uh uh-huh yeah it's like it's my fault like i'm the man so i'm supposed to yeah endure these things like he's just talking to me about what the way god is has called husbands to be. You know, now, we, did you get rid of this thing you had? Yeah, it was. Uh, it turned out to be a uh, scabies. Oh. Yeah. So, God, uh, he scared me straight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You thought you was gonna lose that little fella. <laughs> yeah, that little dude. Was, that little guy is about to be gone. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Okay. So you know. <laughs> After uh, going to, you know, after that marriage failed, I ended up staying with my auntie, and my auntie's real clean, like, she's cool, she be in her room, like, she said I was the best roommate, because it was like I was never there, I'd always make sure I clean up after myself, Yeah, yeah. you know, um, help her, help her with groceries, or she stayed on the second floor, so she got food, I'm running down, I got an auntie, you know, yeah, yeah, she, she, she I she enjoyed having me there. You right. know, and but one day, like, cause I was I'm I'm doing coke. So I remember one day I walked in my auntie's room and I seen I seen two of them. I, both my aunties in there and they got a pipe. And oh. I walk in there like they're like, get out of here. I'm like, nah, what y'all doing? Uh-huh. She said smoking crack. I was like, let me hit that. Uh-huh. She's like, you be messing with this nephew? I was like, yeah, I got some powder. You want some of this? So that's where, and then shoot. Mm. I'm, sing- I'm, I'm single now. Right. So, you know, that, that, that cycle flared up again. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I got to a point to where I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of the way I'm, I'm living. I'm tired of it. Yeah. You and know, having and learned... Told- from Pastor Paul and the word. Yeah. Well, to go back to Paul real quick, like we we were going so much to where he finally looked at her and said, you can't accept the gift. Uh Uh-huh. And we're like, what are you talking about? He's like, you can't accept who he says he is. Like, you can't, you can't believe it. Right. Like the man of God he's representing and he's striving to be like, you don't believe it. Right. And until you, you can believe it, like, that was the first time he ever sided with me. <laughs> but that was the last time we ever went. Oh, wow. Okay. So, going back to my aunties and then just tired of what I, the way I'm living. Yeah. You know, I was messing with this girl and she, uh, you know, I'm talking about I want a kid. And she's like, I, I have your baby. And I'm just like, nah, that's cool. Uh-huh. So, but God was telling me, this is what he told me, Rev. He said, you need to go home. And get rooted, get Ooh. back rooted. Yeah, when yeah. I was about, I, I I skipped over this. 
I'm bad with tell. I'm, I be all over the place when I tell stories. Okay. But my stepdad came into my life when I was about 14, 13, 14. Okay. And he even asked me as a man, he's like, hey, I want to marry your mom. Is that okay? And I'm like, I remember telling him, as long as you treat her right and don't hurt her, we're good. And right. then me and my cousin, me and my cousin used to plot on like beating him up if he ever did anything to my mom or uh-huh. stupid uh-huh. stuff. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, he, and when my mom met, my mom was going to church and like, she started going to church when her mom, my grandma died. Oh. So that's when, that's when church had got introduced, like where we start going to church and then I knew the time of the service. So like grown ups would go there and the high school kids would go with them and I knew the time. So especially my mom would make me go to church. Yeah. Whether if I was hung over or not, she would never know. She, she never accepted that. Right. You know, and, uh, but I would clean up and shoot during service. We, there's a building. We, me and my partners would go, we'd go smoke weed and chill until service was over, freshen up, go back and go back into the, to the building. Mm-hmm. Cause the kids get it. The kids get out before the adults. Oh. So I had this, I, I had this game I was running. Yeah. You know, but now go back to when God was telling me, go home and get, get back rooted in me. Yeah. We're, we're too far. Yeah. So eventually that, that sick and tired of being sick and tired had me moving back here. Okay. So now you leave so, Texas, leave that life behind. Yeah. Uh huh, and now you're back. Yep, and then you know I didn't want to coke no more. I didn't even tell nobody I was coming back, like because I didn't want to. Nobody knew I was coming back. Okay. I didn't want to get. I didn't want to get caught up with. I, I I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't strong enough. I I knew I'd get back in the same thing, so I didn't let nobody know. Right. And so I moved back, and my cousin Joe, like, that's that's. See, that's been like my big brother. <laughs> yeah. When we, were, when we were growing up, so I call him when I get back in town. I'm like, "Hey, cousin, shoot, where you at?" Uh huh. And he's talking. Oh, uh, get some pots of pans for a new spot. I just moved into a whoopie whoop. I'm like, "What, bro? I'm back in sack." Yeah. He's like for real. She pull up. Right. So uh, he just moved into this place. I just moved back. Yeah. And when I moved back, like I'm, in the way I come back, real, I'm driving with no, my life has been suspended for hell along. Like, uh-huh. I, I got my license, and then three days later, they said it's canceled, and they sent me like I have unfinished debts in Texas. Right. They sent the pay. They sent uh, because I had a gang of tickets. Oh. I had a let. I had seven pages front and back of no license, no registration, no insurance, just Ooh. tickets. And, and you know, th- I thank God for my mom, like, cause I was gonna keep riding like that, but she yeah. she stood in the gap and she she paid for it. Really? And, yeah, and you know, it's cause of her that now I have my license, cause I I, I felt I've been I know how to wiggle. Yeah. But now I don't I don't have that. I don't have that worry anymore. Yeah, praise God. You know, and so I moved my cousin, and then I had a I had a thirty eight throwaway. Uh huh. I used to put him in, in my gear shaft, like it had a Malibu, and I popped a little thing, and shove shove my pistols in there. At You're the throwaway, right. the ones that were registered to me, I'd keep them in the door frame and have a stripper flyer facing up. So if I swung my door open, you just see the flyer, not the pistol. Right, right. So, and then I can't when I moved back down. Uh, about a week, two weeks later, I ended up moving in with my cousin. But I had got a job. I started moving furniture out here. Okay. And uh, and the back up a little bit. I was moving furniture for like seven, eight years. Okay. You know, d- during all this stuff too. So that was when I was in Texas. Right. But uh. So, I'm my mom. She stays in a good area, right? Like, yeah, stuff really stuff don't pop over there. It'd be on the other side. Yeah. So, 
my car is parked out there. I wake up in the morning, all my stuff was gone. My pistol, my grill, my clothes, my shoes. Like someone, someone got me. Yeah. And I'm just like, cause Rev, like when I got out here and I got a job, I'm moving furniture. I took a backpack. I got my pistol in my backpack mm -hmm. because I'm so that's that's how I, I carried it like someone carrying a cell phone. Right, right. You know, thank God I I never I never used it. Praise you know, I'd God. shoot off. I, I, I'd shoot off around the city. Yeah. But I knew if, if I pulled in on somebody, yeah, I can't. I have to pull the trigger. So I'd always be mindful. Like, well, I'll just beat you up, bro. You ain't. You're not. You're not going there. So I'm not even going to yank on you. Right. Right. And so, mm. and then I remember being upset, but then God, I remember God was like, shoot. A lot of people was like, God saved you because my money was running low and nobody knows I'm back. Uh -huh. And this job ain't paying really nothing. Right. So next question is, shoot, cousin, who you uh who's who's a sucker in the game? Right. You know, and praise God, he he prevented all that. Wow. And then I'm I'm staying with my cousin and you know he used to talk about a bachelor pad and all that, but it was like he would never – he'd have a problem if I bring too many females or – Right. He don't, want pe he don't want people all up in his house. Right. And, you, you know, and, and we were doing drugs. We were doing coke up in there. And I remember I used to talk about the word. I'd get, I'd get geeked up and just start talking about the word. Like, nothing to talk about. That's all I want to talk about. Like, I wouldn't even want to go get no girl. If we're talking about God, I'm stuck right here. This is all I want to do. Really? It to, yeah, I got to a point to my cousin was high, and he he sits up. He's like, "Man, why you always want to?" Because when when he would do coke, it was a downer for him. He liked to relax, be by himself. You're right. He reminded me how he how you used to say how you used to be. Right. When you were on drugs. Yeah. He's kind of like he's like that, and I'm I want to go. I'm a social butterfly. I'm everybody's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Right. You know, yeah. You yeah. making too much noise, moving around too quick. You talking, you blowing my high. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. and he he said, Why do you always want to talk about God when you're high? You'll never talk about him when you're sober. Ooh. And the spirit convicted me and I just looked at him. I'm like, I had justifications going on in my head. Like, yeah. God still can use me in this minute. What do you I just looked at my cousin and told him, I said, you're right. You're right. Wow. You're right. And I asked God, because without the drugs, shoot, I, I was quiet. I was a quiet kid. Yeah. Like, I, I remember pe being in a room with older cats, and they'd be like, shoot, I like you. Yeah. Because you're, you're quiet, you sit and observe. You must be a killer, huh? And I just sit there. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm just watching and paying right. attention. Right. I let their I let them their assumptions make me something, mm -hmm. you know. So I asked God. I was like, "What the way I feel when I'm on one talking about you, Lord? Give me that sober, right? Because I see what you're talking about, right? And then it's like, then as I start growing in, in the word, like it comes to mind now. Like they have a form of godliness." But deny his power. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. And that's what that ultimately had me quit doing drugs. Because and then try to be it I just get broke. <laughs> and then shoot, since I'm not I'm not hustling, I'm spending yeah. my work money. And right. then trying to make it make it I'd always make sure my bills were paid. I was a functioning addict. Right. But it's just I got tired of not Again, that's the greatest point someone can get. When you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, yeah. that's when chains are, are going to be broken and things are going to be, change is coming. So the Lord is guiding you. Are you aware of this all those years in your 20s that God's there and that he's pushing you out of where or away from where you want to go, but you're going against him. You know, were you aware? No, nah, I wasn't aware of that at all. 
like that never came into my mind because right. when I read the Bible, like why Proverbs is, it, it's my favorite book. Yeah, it's because I know, like I knew about Jesus, I believed in Jesus, I, I know what He did. Like I believe these things. Now, how do I walk this out? Right, right. And and, and Proverbs gave me the blueprint as far as this is the righteous, this is the wicked. Right. Proverbs beat me up. Like, I felt like I was in a mosh pit and I was just getting stomped out. Proverbs, the conviction that came. Yeah. Because it, it talks about, you know, in the first chapter, it talks about don't move with men that, uh, he said, my son, sinful men try to entice you, don't go with them. When they say, let's go right. shed innocent blood or right. they start motion, motioning their fingers and their feet, like, it, that, like I start thinking of gang life, like right. the life I'm in. Right. You know what I'm saying? People motioning things, you know, with their fingers throwing up their gangs and even got dances with their feet and then go like hitting licks. Yeah. And like it. So Proverbs for me is where my foundation comes from in the Lord. So you're getting I, convicted in your spirit down to your soul by the word of God. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Not a preacher, not a teacher, not not a particular church building, or even a uh, friend. You're getting nah. convicted by the power in the Word of God. To show you how much. Okay, you remember that girl that I told you she was on came out of rehab, the stripper girl. Yes. So we were staying in the same house. This was, you know. We were staying together and we we're outside smoking. Yeah. Now, and we're we stay in a bad area. Yeah. So there's a man and a and a woman. I'm assuming husband and wife. They yeah. They hit the corner and they walk up to us. And this man told me about myself. Really? He said. He said. He, said, he told me like as far as like what I'm doing. I'm selling drugs. Like the life I'm living, and he's like. And he said, and then he pointed at her, and he said, "With her, she's giving love. Like she's giving love. This is her last straw on love. Either you love her or you let her go." Uh huh. Well, I'm not gonna love her, and I'm not letting her go either. How about that? Uh huh. My uh -huh. mind frame. You know, but now looking back, now it's like that was God. Yeah. I, like because I'm destroying his daughter's life. Right. I'm right. doing everything. I'm I'm, I'm partaking. All the men that has hurt this woman. Yeah. I'm I'm doing the same thing they're doing. Wow. And he had her in rehab, and she had stopped stripping. And here you come. Yeah. And yeah. here 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 I come. Right. You know, tearing up everything. Wow. So, yeah, and there's just a lot of stuff I really don't like. I don't be remembering. Uh huh. It like goes in the sea, the sea of forgetfulness. But when like how we're talking and yeah, I'm actually like thinking about the bust down of my testimony. Like certain things start popping up, like heck of random. All right. Well, we're at an hour and thirteen minutes. Let's try to bring this thing home. So come on. I met you along with Bert, Amen, and the rest of the commission. And you guys are on fire for the Lord. Amen. I mean, you're coming real. There ain't nothing yeah. fake about y'all. The love that you're sharing with the homeless, with others in the neighborhood, with those that are in need, in ministry. <coughs> this thing is Holy Ghost fire. So oh you've gotten in your word. How'd you catch on fire? So that they'll know. Because somebody it's might be out there struggling, know the word, convicted by the word, into things they ought not be into. How did the Lord light you on fire? Why are you this gospel rapper now? And the word, I'm listening to the words for you guys out there. Uh, underneath where this podcast posts, 
uh, Tone sent me two songs. That other one, that was me. I sang that a long time ago. There's two songs from Tone, okay? He's called S.B. Tone, the Berean. And listen to these words. These words are hard. It's like, whoa. I mean, that's spirit feel. When you're writing, you can feel the fire. When you're rapping, you can feel the fire. You can feel the conviction. When I've seen you ministering and praying with folks, I see that fire on you. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. But you was this OG. You was this gangster at one moment. Then you get convicted by the word. You start getting into this word. You, you're tired. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired. What did God do to you? Did he take you upstairs in the bathroom and spank you real good? What happened? Well, when he was, I didn't know he was doing that. I see when he does it now and just choose to humble myself before he whoops me. Yeah. But before, before then, uh, that's when I told you, Rev, like I be having trouble with my testimony, so I can't pinpoint it. All I can say is the sanctification process we're in. Yeah, it really works. It, 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 it's a process. Yeah. So all these things, like I'm, I'm, I was wild and talking about Jesus on coke in clubs, telling OGs about Jesus, and, yeah. I, and telling them, I'm, this is where I'm at. I'm not justifying it, but this is God still can use you. You just have to build a relationship with Him, get to know who He is. Yeah. And I would just tell people when it says seek the kingdom, and everything else will be added. Yeah. God. I try every time I try to clean myself up, I do more damage. Right. Right. And I'm learning to let go and let God. And wow. I guess what I can what I can say is mm -hmm. stay in your word. Yeah. It don't matter what you're going. I mean, I used to I used to be drunk and high. Have the word open. God used that in that time and brought me to a place where, okay, this is and he used people that convicted me this is we we can't do this no more right right and then the choice the choice was easy like when my cousin made that comment yeah the choice was e well, it, it made it easy for me because i didn't see really no wrong because nobody was gonna be bold enough to tell me the truth right you know and i praise god that he was that was know, just some powerful I, words so when you get high all you do is talk about god but when you ain't high, I don't hear nothing about God. What nothing. is this? What is this? And, and that really challenged me, Rev. Like it challenged yeah. me in a whole other way. Like, mm. okay, Lord, because that was that was my that was the God I created. Right. I, I didn't realize that was the God I created. I had to get, and I was in His Word, and I. That's the dangerousness of scripture with and pick and choosing your favorite scriptures right and just and just walking that just walking that out right you know you gotta you gotta read this whole 66 with no rations that's right i love you that know. part of your song 66 in the clip that's powerful you know what i mean there's 66 that's, books in this bible and it's like god that's why now i'm able to say i'm thankful for my past i used to resent it be angry at it yeah. But now I see God, he uses that. Now he can send me to the places that the buildings don't go into. Because right. I wasn't afraid to go in them when I, when I wasn't thinking about them. Now, right. And now I, I would have a slight fear, but now there's none. Yeah. Because if, yeah. I, if, I, if, I, if I get killed out on the battlefield going into one of these camps, as long as I'm walking in his, in his authority, not leaning on my own. Right. You know right. what I mean? I'm fine. I died a martyr. Like we're gonna, it says you're gonna be persecuted. Like these things. Look yeah. how they did Jesus. No, yeah. So we we shouldn't expect it to be sunshine and roses, right? Peace and cream all day. Uh -uh. Like it tells it tells it in the season I'm in now. The Lord's been showing me rejoice in the suffering. Right, right. Because it produces, and like. Get in your word and see what it produces. Perseverance, patience, to where you lack nothing. To where, when these things, I don't even look at the devil like that no more. Rev, I look at okay, God, you're testing me. People be like, oh, the, 
the devil, the devil, well, God's allowing you and he won't give you more than you can handle. So, okay, That's right. Lord, you're, you're testing me. You're, you're building me. You're actually probably trying to uh, remove something from me. Yeah. Try, just, I'm getting irritated easily. So you're going to use things to get me irritated to have me remember you and focus on your word in those moments. That's so right. Where now they have, now, now I'm in the fight. Now yeah. I let the Lord, I let the, I gave it to the Lord and let him fight it for me through me. Wow. You know, wow. And I'm going to tell you what I'm getting out of this testimony. Y'all in the comment can either agree, disagree. Maybe you've seen something else. But I think, I think Tone got off easy. <laughs> now, maybe I was just too far out there. Are you with me? I mean, I had 11 felonies and I didn't hit the prison. It's like the Lord said, son, what are you doing? You want to get to yeah. prison that bad? Don't worry, I'm going to send you to prison. But you're going to come out the same day. The way you're going, you might not ever get out. You feel yeah. me? But yeah. I see a gentle hand of God on Tone's life that as bad as he wanted to be, the Lord is like, no, no, uh-uh, no, hey, this Rev. isn't going to happen. You know what I mean? Hey, Rev. Yeah. So there's one more thing I want to share about my testimony. Good. Because now, because I still haven't gotten to my wife, my current wife. <laughs> right. Now, your and wife got, and family I met. Mm -hmm. What a sweet family the Lord blessed you with. Come on. God is so good. He's I good. I can see that from across the street. You know what yeah. I'm saying? This was definitely uh, a divine intervention. Go ahead. We got about nine minutes left. Amen. We'll be at an hour and a half. I'm not timing you, though. And we're not putting no time on the Lord either. I'm just making you aware of what the counter says on my screen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. Yeah. All right. So when I had my firstborn son, he's he's about to be three in November. Okay. So, so me and his mom got into it. We were drinking, got into it. She called the police. They end up taking me in. Uh-huh. Uh, I had scratches on me. She didn't have nothing on her. But they take me in. And uh, so I'm going to try to speed this up. Take the time. <laughs> so, Don't worry about the time. We okay. All right. Okay, well, so when they got there, I'm holding my baby. And I'm like, I'm asking him. So pretty much if I say that, if I had, hypothetically speaking, if I had marks on me and she don't have marks on her and I, I say something, my baby's going in the CPS, right? And he didn't say nothing. I'm like, okay, so, yeah, um, all right, let's go. So, mm. I get I get booked. They, they take me in, and I'm hot. Yeah. I'm so hot. Like, I'm on, I'm on my paid family leave right now. My son is a month years old. I said I'm never coming back to this place, and here I am. So yeah. I'm hot. Yeah. And then I got I got a red wristband on. I don't know what that means yet, but there. And I go into the tank, and like every time I've went, I ain't never had no chip yeah. on my shoulder. Right. I went in. I went in there with a chip on my shoulder because I'm like, man, shoot, black man, white woman, domestics. This is California, man. They're, I'm going up. I'm going. To, I'm going to prison. Right. I I made I've already have it in my head that's where I'm going and I've accepted it. I'm like, all right, well, shoot, shoot. I'm a, I'm gonna save I'm gonna save uh, this fight for when I touch down. Right. So I'm in the tank. No one's tripping. There's a, there's a black guy up in there and he's he's cool. Yeah. And I could tell I could I could tell I could tell what type of cat he is. Yeah. So I could tell we come from the same caliber. Yeah, he's just not. He's like I used to be, not tripping. Like right. it's iron vacation for me, and I'll be out. Mm -hmm. Well, and they start talking about the colors of the wristbands, and like I'm like me and another guy. We only got red ones, and there's like fifteen of us in there, and everybody else got yellow. And they're like, "Shoot, yellow means 
it's a felony or it's a misdemeanor. Red is a felony. Oh. I'm like, shoot. I'm like, shoot. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, what you in for? I'm like, shoot. I'm just here, bro. Yeah. So, speed it up a little bit. They take us. Would they take us up to a, a cell? Yeah. Me and the black dude. And we're sitting there like we start talking about God and you know jail talk. Oh man, when I get out, I ain't never doing this and this and that and the other. And yeah, yeah. There was a point in time where we're like, man. He said, man, I wish we had a Bible. Well, the mm. cats next door, one of them rolled out and slid us his Bible. Whoa. Right after this dude said it. So we're like, wow. Wow. Okay. So, like, the joy of the Lord is, in, you know, we, we're we feeling the conviction. We're feeling like, man, we wanted a Bible. We got one. So now we're in it. Right, and right. So, Fellowship. So, hey, man. Yeah. And we haven't seen no judge yet. I haven't called nobody. Mm-hmm. You know, and I end up getting a visit from CPS, hollering at them, come back, talking to Brett some more. Well, they end up sending him somewhere else. I don't know where he went. Okay. <laughs> so now by myself, it's just me and God now. Now I have someone to fellowship to keep the enemy's voice quiet. Yeah. 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 Now that's all I'm here. I'm hearing. Mm-hmm. And then there's somebody screaming like, like they're being something bad's happening to them. Mm. And it, it wasn't it wasn't bo- like I heard it before, but it didn't bother me till now. So yeah. now I get filled with a rage, Rev, that I've never felt before. Like every time I fought, I never was mad. Yeah, you know, but I've never felt a rage like this fall on me. And I got and this God gave me this image. He gave me an image of a guard and my son. I know what my son looks like when he's a month. I, I can see him right now. Yeah. Every time. So I see a guard with my son and he's walking away. And I just see my son's little bitty head and face on his shoulder walking away from me. Yeah. That's when that rage. Mm. So at that time, now I'm ready to fight guards. I'm ready to get him up with the guards. Like, I'm going to the king anyway. I'm not going to see my baby. And I'm, I just watched one of you guys take my son. Yeah. I want to yeah. fight. Yeah. I want to fight bad. I'm I'm about to start. I'm I'm thinking about that. Like, I'm about to start kicking the door. I'm about to get their attention. As soon as they open it, I'm teeing off. I'm wow. playing at this time. And God, I cried. I, I'm in tears at this point. I cry out to God. I said, Lord. This is why I'm here. Yeah. This anger, this rage, this is why I'm yeah. here. This, despite people who know the situation, yeah. the world says I'm not in the wrong that she was. Yeah. But it was my it was my response to that situation. I'm telling the Lord just like this. Yeah. It's it, it's it's the way I responded to the situation is why I'm here. Take this rage from me. Yeah. So after about maybe an hour. Hmm. Doors pop open. Mm. They, they tell me to roll up. I'm like, that means you going home. Yeah. I haven't even seen that. I, yeah, I you seen, rolling I, up. You out of here. <laughs> but I'm in. I'm. I don't. I'm in. I don't believe it. I'm like, oh, this must be a new guard, or he's messing with me. Uh huh. He don't know the terms, like because yeah. I haven't even seen it. I haven't seen a judge, and I haven't talked to a bondsman. I haven't right. told nobody. Right that where I'm at like so it's like okay cases drop (laughs) yeah so in my head I don't know what's going on I don't think I'm leaving I'm just going I'm like no maybe they made a mistake so I ain't gonna say nothing (laughs) yeah and as I'm I'm we're getting close to processing out yeah and I actually when I get to the spot like even sitting in the tank waiting with the other people to get right I'm I'm tripping I'm like, nah. Can't be. <laughs> can't be. If they let me out here, bro, I'm I'm gone. Right. So they processed you in and processed you out. Whoa. In like two days. And that's a miracle. I think I'm about to be locked up for New Year's. I got out the right. 31st. Wow. And I went in on the 29th because that's when... Yeah, his birthday's on the 29th, so it was a month. Wow. So, and then I get, I get to the man that reads your charges. 
He mm-hmm. says you got three you got three counts of domestic and you got a misdemeanor for breaking the phone. Uh-huh. So the the, the he said the domestic he's reading them to me. He's like the domestics run each one run uh one to six consecutive. Okay. They don't run concurrent. Mm-hmm. I only I only know concurrent. I've only dealt with like if I'm doing time for this, I'm doing time for all this stuff too. Right. Well, for those who don't know, consecutive means okay, each of them ran from one to six. The minimum is a year, the max is six years on each one. Right. So let's say so what you're looking at is a minimum of three to eighteen years. Right. Once you do once you complete the first domestic, then you all right, you're done with that one. Yeah. Now you're starting the second one, then you'll do that one and then start you know, right. However they wanna bust it down. Right. But this man, he read them charges. This man told me he said, All right, you can leave and you don't never have to come back. My jaw dropped and I I got out of there because I'm like, they made a mistake. Yeah, so they dropped the charges. He said, I don't have to come back, bro. And from that day forward, God starts revealing, like, it's okay to be angry, just don't sin. Yeah. It's okay. Tell the truth, but tell it in love. The tone, you like to tell the truth when you're angry and then it cuts and hurts people and it's counterproductive. Right, right. It's the, it's the way you say it and it's not in a loving manner. Wow. I, I've never had a problem telling the truth. It's just how I tell it. Right. Because my thing with, I used to tell people in the world, like, they be like, if they think I'm lying, I'm like, bruh, why would I got to lie to you? You're not the police and you're definitely not going to whoop me. Yeah. So why do I have to yeah. lie to you? Right. You know, and and that's the mentality I had. But in Christ, wow. Christ still uses he uses that. He's like, shoot, if God goes before me, why am I worried about the what, what a demon can do to me? That's right. You know, greater is he that's in me. And it's only by him. So it's like these things so mm. now. Now, you know how people wake up and be like, man, the devil, he keeps coming. He just won't stop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, roll uh, roll switch. Right. Shoot, now the the mission is to wake up. When we wake up, the devil say, oh, no. Right. Rev and tone. Yeah, and up. yeah. They just, they just won't stop. They man, just we gotta won't call stop. We got we to gotta call in more. And then, <laughs> shoot, if he, makes the, if he makes a call to his backup, he still has to get the authorization from God. Yeah, that's right. And, and if God allows it, it's because he's trying to build us. He's trying to build us godly characters. So when anger tries to come against me, now I look at it, oh, uh-huh. oh this, is a, this is an opportunity to glorify the Lord and not lean on my own, oh, and not lean and die to my flesh. Amen. This is the opportunity to analyze myself and then be a reflection to the people who are looking at me. Yeah. You know, so he starts showing me these things and it goes hand in hand with rejoicing the suffering. You know what? God, you're a miracle. Praise God. You're a miracle. God has protected you because most people who have gone down the paths, and there's many of them, that you've (laughs) gone down, don't come out unscratched and unscathed as you have. God has a mighty, mighty purpose for your life. And he just refused to let you go no matter how far out there you were. He's like, no, no, not this one. And you're so young. You're that young warrior. There's something awesome. I mean, truly awesome for somebody out here that God's going to use tone for tone has been set aside by God for a special purpose. And I can't wait to get that podcast. I can't wait to get that testimony and share it with y'all. Amen? Because I do believe we're going to be hooked up and around each other for quite a while on this battlefield. And just to be, just to be shoulder to shoulder in between Tone and Bird on this battlefield for souls, you have no idea. This was a dream of mine for years. 19 years of preaching and teaching, trying to find the warriors, and here the Lord had them all hit up here in Northern California. <laughs> Amen. 
<laughs> what you hiding them for, good. Lord? I've been looking for them. But now we Look, are running. Drawing. Huh? He's drawing because, like, he drew you to Sacramento and he drew me back to Sacramento. That's right. Something he wants done to glorify his name, to glorify his kingdom, to be a blessing to his people. And I ain't leaving till it's done. You know I'm sold out. I'm just Come so on. glad you're sold out. Bert sold right. out. Everybody sold out. Well, finally. <laughs> like we were talking about in Bible study last night. Finally. To get shoulder to shoulder on this battlefield and not feel so all alone, but have an army with you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But see, yeah, he ain't even lit you up yet. Okay? Yeah. You on fire, but you just wait. Because it's yeah. like he's been preserving you like a secret weapon. He don't want yeah. nobody to know. He don't want them demons to know what he's finna unleash through you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So he has, oh, like, kept you sheltered where you should have gone down hard. No. That's my job. Uh uh. Don't let it happen, angels. Take him over here. Remove him out of harm's way. But you didn't have that full goal relationship with him, like others right. who have struggled a lot more and had to go through things for the decisions and choices they made. It's like he's like, uh uh. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. When I turn this one loose, it's going to be on. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. I just thank God for you, Tony, and I thank you for taking the time out. I know it was a sacrifice. I mean, y'all, he, he should be at work. He ain't getting paid because he came on to share, you know, I'm the goodness of the car. <laughs> Technically, I'm paying you right now, Rev. Oh, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Man. Praise That's right. Lord, and all uh, of us right. here, thank you for your sacrifice. We thank God for you. Would you like to close us in prayer? Yes, yes. Okay. <coughs> Is there a word Father, on your heart no. before you pray that you can give them to encourage their day, their their run, their walk, their battle, their fight? We got a lot of people out here hurting to them. I would encourage everyone to look in the book of James when it talks about suffering because that's the season we're in. We're in the suffering season because the end is near. Yeah. So I would encourage to look in James and mm -hmm. see what the Lord talks about rejoicing and suffering. Okay. Also look in uh, Romans 5, 1 through 5, and even Google it. Bible verses about rejoicing in the suffering. Rejoicing we're gonna need, in the suffering. We're going to need it. We're okay. going to need to be rejoicing in the suffering when they're threatening to kill us yeah. and, and, and persecute us. That's when, right. What they're, what they're doing in the Middle East, when it makes it to America, we're going to need to understand what it means to rejoice in the suffering. That's right. I also right. encourage Proverbs to get wisdom and understanding and knowledge. Yes. Because we're definitely, we're going to need Lady Wisdom to be able to endure. That's and right. To be able to, and able, and able to have to be able to rejoice in the suffering we're going to need god's wisdom and his understanding praise without god. it without it we can't we won't be able to rejoice in the suffering we're right. making it the same way as the world and the, the rain falls on the just and the unjust alike the difference is between us and the world is we get to suffer for something worthwhile awesome huh yeah <laughs> unlike the world that suffers for no reason and so then I, I, are gonna suffer even more when they hit yeah. that pit of hell, our suffering ends. There's right, that. Right, right. <laughs> well put. Yeah, <laughs> straight up. So I, I just encourage y'all, brothers and sisters, keep building that relationship. Whatever religious, what a, church hurt, we can't let people define us. We can't let people define who God is because he represented himself perfectly. Yeah. And you know, so... I just encourage everyone keep building that relationship. Yeah. Check out, check out, get wisdom. Yeah. For, for what, for all you have, get understanding. Praise God. Go to Proverbs and, yeah. and, and, and check out James and Romans. Yeah. Amen. Pray us out too. 
<clears throat> Dear gracious Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to you, Lord, to give you all the honor, glory, and thanks. Yes, Lord. I just thank you for this time with my brothers and sisters and to be able to yeah. have this opportunity to share the testimony you've created, Lord, to bring thank you glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I pray, I pray it encourages others that God is not finished with you yet, mm. no matter where you're at. That's right. He will take you. He He will take you where you are. And Lord, you do the cleaning. Thank you, Lord. Our 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 good works are filthy rags, and I pray that you just fill us with your Holy Ghost, Lord. I pray that you you convict all of us, Lord, Thank in the you, areas Lord. we need we need to we need to tighten up for you, Lord. The Thank areas you, Lord. that you called us to give up, help us with those, Lord. We just thank you that you're so merciful and grateful. Thank you, Lord. I ask for conviction, Lord, because your word says it brings godly sorrow. Godly sorrow leads to repentance, which brings us closer to God, Lord. And yes, Lord. You desire none to perish, and you put love in me, so now I love what you love. You love people, Lord. So I just ask that you just let us be receptive to your conviction, Lord. You say you discipline those you love. That's right, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I, I ask you just give the ear that hears, the ear that hears, Lord, a fresh fire, new yeah. revelations, Lord. Give them a hunger for your word that can't be satisfied, Lord, yes, where Lord. it consumes them. I'll ask the heads of protection and a wall of fire yes, Lord. around all my brothers and sisters. I lift up my brother Rev, Lord, and just thank you for the mighty thank man you. of God you called him to be and his obedience, Lord, and his thank self sacrificial you. love, Lord. Yes, Lord. I just thank you for bringing another brother in my life, Lord, that we can lock arms with. Yes, Lord. And I ask that you continue to bring more warriors. More warriors. I ask that we're able to die to ourselves and increase in you, Lord. In Jesus' thank mighty name Jesus. we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank God for all of you. We'll be back tomorrow, back in the book of Revelation. Amen. See you tomorrow. God bless each and every one of you.